Everyone, welcome to the April 2024 sent to us board meeting. Um, as already mentioned, we are going to be enforcing raised hands to keep um, everyone from talking over each other. I know we always discuss that, but I'm going to actually start enforcing it so that everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, the previous minutes are listed in the agenda if anyone needs to see them. Um, and I wanted to start off because we're kind of two months late on this, the leadership check-in. Um, I had already talked to Pat and Tomas, and we are all three good with remaining in our leadership positions. But the question to you all, are you happy with us? Um, and even if you all are happy with us, does anyone want to run for a position? I have a shaking head from Troy. All right, then we will continue functioning in our current roles. Thank you, Jeffro. Jeffro said he was happy with us all. And we have a thumbs up from Mike. Okay, so that was easy. Um, next is the meeting schedule. Being that we do have a mem new member in, in, in Troy, is everyone still good with this time? Um, our European members, we don't have Tomas, but with the time change, are we still good? Yes, Brian? Uh, the time is where it always is, which is slightly unpleasant for Europe. But, you know, I look to the council to try and figure out whether this is an option to move at a reasonably earlier time. My recollection, just for what it's worth, is that uh, Tomas and I both are of the opinion that, like, if we can't get it to, like, noon Eastern and earlier for U.S. Eastern time, then it, this is better because we both have personal things that cause the middle hours to be problematic. Right. And we didn't want to be within dinner time. Pat, you have your hands raised. Well, if I recall, this time slot overrides and conflicts with the Apple governance. And since Troy is now on the board, isn't it? It does not. Apple we moved, moved it. Okay. We moved, I was actually going to say yeah. that we can't move this because we moved all the other ones to free this slot up. Neil, raising hands, enforced. Don't make me mute you. I'm trying to be fair to everybody. Okay, so Troy has said we are good with this time. I know moving it to too early conflicts with dinner and other things for Amia. Um, we can put a poll up if we want to go that route again. Um, is everyone okay with Wednesday? Can we move earlier? Um, West Coast folks, how early could you go? Neil says the app hyperscale at noon. I also have a riding lesson at 11, um, which is noon Eastern. Um, Davida? Uh, there we go. Um, earlier for me is a bit tricky because I have, there's hyperscale, there's other meetings, and there's also lunch like right before this for me. Um, so, I mean, we can try to do another one is good. My hunch is that this is probably the least worst option for most people here, but. Um, I'm not opposed to trying another one is good if we want to try that. Troy, what are your thoughts on this time? Does it work for you? This time it works for me. As Neil said, because we moved the Apple meeting already, this time works for me. Um, earlier, I have three other meetings. So, uh, yeah, for a Wednesday, this is a good time for me. Okay, Mike? Oh, I just want to say it sounded like this got introduced with the notion that the that the, the time change was a factor, and I don't think it is because there's really only about a three week period where there's a difference between Europe and the U.S. on that point, and we're past. yeah. But um, we do certainly have new members, and also people's schedules change, and it has been a while since we did this. I think last time we did this, um, we ended up doing some sort of spreadsheet sign up when is good kind of web app to figure out what was best i don't know if it's if we need to revisit that or if it's just enough to all co-sign on either keeping it here or moving it back a couple hours yeah as pat had chad um put in the chat that 
most of our mornings or earlier times for US based folks, where we have meetings with EMEA based folks at those times. So no matter what we end up pushing later, because we also have West Coast folks, so we can't go too, too early. Um, and we don't want to disturb Bex or Tomas's dinner with their families. But we can definitely put up another poll um, with the thought that it may not change anything, but we can put that together for sure. All right. Anything else on this topic? All right, so the next thing we have is the CentOS 7 AMI availability that was sent to the dev mailing list, Josh, is that correct? Okay, um, just basically asking what its status was going to be. Um, so is that something we want to keep as available provided we reach out to integration SIG and see if they can even do that? Um, Josh, then Pat. Yeah, just just from my perspective, like the requester basically said, like, are they going to be available so people can deploy them and then attach uh, subscriptions to third party services to continue support for those things beyond um, what CentOS itself is going to offer? That's fine. I don't really care uh, if that's an option they want to do. The thing I would note, though, is like. If you're not paying attention, which is something that we're continually worried about and you go to deploy an AMI and it exists and it like you launch it and then you do like a yum update, it's actually gonna break because we're moving all the stuff to vault. So from my perspective, I would actually rather remove them um, because people who already have the AMIs, like they're already out there, they can attach those third-party services, but I'm I'm certainly open to a discussion. Like this is just my, my knee-jerk reaction to it. Okay, Pat. Yeah, I'm in a similar sort of position. Um, I don't actually know what our AMI says outright. And so if it says this is up and it's, you know, we're providing packages and updates and all that in the metadata, I don't want the metadata about the AMI to say, oh, we're providing software updates for this. And that just fundamentally be false. Um, it's, it's important that the metadata matches the truth. Davida? Um, so one thing to consider is if we outright delete this, that will break uh, all the launch configs that people might have that reference those machines, which means that if you have, for example, an autoscale group with that instance, that will like outright break. I don't know if it will like break the next time you redeploy it or if you will just like, oh, your machine failed, now you're screwed and it's 2 a.m. So this might have unintended consequences far and wide. Um, also, I the other thing I will note is I don't think there's any general expectation that stuff in the AMI catalog is good. Um, like, I don't know if any of you has tried searching for either CentOS or Fedora in the catalog. Um, like, I would say 90% of the stuff in there is complete and utter garbage, and that you have to, like, specifically make an effort to find the ones that come from us and not from like some random like entity that may or may not be backdoored. Troy? Oh. Uh, although I like Devita's thing, uh, I just wanted to speak to Pat's. So if we do keep it up there, I'd like the idea of somehow making the DNF thing say, you know, CentOS 7 not supported or something something of the effect so that if they if we do leave it there people do try to do updates or installs something gives an indication that it is not supported troy is that something your sig would do alt images um no i think this is more something that johnny would do on his last image we could do a number of things if we if we chose to do that, right? We could change the config files to point to vault if we wanted to do that. Um, that that's one option. I, I personally don't think we want to make it work as if um, 
when you, when you run an update, if it goes through normally and everything works, I don't know that we want to do that for something that's past EOL, right? Because that gives the user a false sense of security that everything's working. So the fact that it's broken actually isn't a bad thing, in my opinion, if we if it if it's broken. But um, I don't think we should take it down. Uh, although if we took it down on the AMIs but left it up on the generic archive, that that might be fine as well, right? It, it's okay on cloud.cintos.org. It's there if you really want it, but it's not there on in AWS. So you could you could still stand up your own copy and run it if you really, really, really wanted to do that and you were smart enough. But anyway, it's a lot of discussion. I'm sorry. OK, Davida, then Mike, and then I have a question for you, Johnny. Um, I just want to say that I also agree that leaving it's far better to have it up and leave it broken that silently make it look like it's going to work. But you're also never going to get updates ever again, because that would be that would be pretty sketchy. Um, the for what is worth, I actually don't know if the one I pulled up is the right one, but the one I pulled up on catalog now says, uh, CentOS support is entirely community driven. Please note this is open source software, software supported provided to the software community only, um, which doesn't seem like a strong commitment, so it might be okay to leave that up, Mike. I just want to say I can imagine people using these images in very different ways, and it may be there may even be some valid or semi-valid cases where they would use uh, use this image and not need the updates, not want the updates, and not have the image really live very long. Um, so I, I can see people getting very mad if these things just went away, um, but we definitely do need to make sure that it's very clear their status. And so I'm I'm with I think. A lot of people, other people saying, let's make sure that they get errors, they get updates, and maybe some sort of warning. I do like the idea of like a final uh, uh, EOL image update or something like that, but we don't get in the weeds, I guess. Thanks. Which brings my question to Johnny Can we put an MOTD or something in like the next to last release and then in the last release saying, hey, this is going end of life, just so you know, you're not going to be able to update? And, and then one that says basically, this is end of life. You will not be able to update. I'm sure we could put something in, um, something in in the DNF output on the console if people are using that. You know, I mean, we it already has it already has stuff <clears throat> that shows up, and we could certainly make it say whatever we want it to say. Josh. Um, keeping in mind we're talking about AMIs and cloud usage patterns, putting something in the message of the day sounds like something that will never get seen by a human ever, right? Um, putting something in DNF that airs out probably would be slightly better, but not really worth the effort because it's going to return an error and they're going to basically go, well, why did my update fail? And then maybe they'll go look, right? Like, uh, it's um, it's really no different than like just having it break because we move stuff to Vault, and you can put the you can put the informational message on the metadata around the AMI itself rather than having to change code and do CentOS specific builds of, uh, of the Yum plugin or whatever you want to do. Anyway, that that's that's just an observation because it's a cloud usage pattern, not a not a data center or you know pet machine usage pattern. Okay, I like that metadata idea. Davida? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we can easily enough edit the description in the catalog to just saying like bold letters on the top, this is end of life. <laughs> and then like people still want to deploy it. That's that's kind of on them. <laughs> this won't help if you already had a launch config with the image reference, but like then again it would break at some point. So you would notice that way. So I think that way we cover both potential new users and existing users, and it should be okay. Yeah, I do like the idea of leaving it broken and putting on, you know, putting on the uh, the documentation the path to vault if people actually want to use that. I mean, it's available, it's there, 
it'll be broken. When they go look for why it's broken, they'll be able to figure it out. And if they're smart enough to put in a different path, certainly if they're smart enough to put in third party um, support, uh, that shouldn't cause them any problems at all. Right. If, if, if they're smart enough to continue to get updates from someplace else, I don't know why they'd want to do that, but I mean, that third party should also be able to put out a copy of what we had at final release time if they wanted to do that. It's free, right? It's out there. So why would they support CentOS instead? Okay, so it sounds like we would like to do something that gives them more information, perhaps in the docs, the metadata, but also leave it up and let them break. Is that the consensus? Thumbs, 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 thumbs. Yay, thumbs. Okay, so that is what we will do. Um, Pat? If folks can check my attempts to summarize the conversation in the notes, um, we'll see how close I came. I think he did pretty good. All right, so we will move on to the next agenda item if there is nothing else on this one, which is sent to us stream eight end of life communications and that was Troy's item. Uh, yeah, this was brought up to me by Adam uh, Samalik. Um, well, and our team, the Central Stream team. Uh, we're working on the final plan for the Central Stream 8 end of life. Uh, Adam would like to, as we've finalized the plan, send that out to Centos Devel um, in appropriate places. Uh, and he just wanted to make sure he's not stepping on anybody's toes. I'm sure that the, the board or whoever can have our own Central Stream 8 is now end of life, but he wanted to, he, he felt the more communication, the better. And if so. he wants me to edit, I do a lot of that for things for work, so I can give it a once over if he'd like. Okay, I can tell him that. Part of my job. Josh? Um, I am I am all for more communication. That's totally fine. Is Adam aware he's likely to get hate mail when he sends this out? <laughs> I'm asking seriously, because like that will happen and he needs to be aware if he if he really wants to send it. I think he's aware, but I will I will let him know. Okay. Because if he's not comfortable with that, then any one of the board members could send it on his behalf. That way the hate mail comes our way. Davida, then Sean. Yeah, I was gonna say for exactly that reason, it might be best to like send this as like the voice of the project, where like or at least make it abundantly clear that like you're not sending it in a personal capacity, you're sending it like as the project or as the board or whatever like entity. But like maybe that slightly reduces the amount of hate mail or <laughs> at least makes it less awful. Maybe. Okay, I uh, I will bring both of those up. Oh, Sean's got his hand up too. Yep. Oh, I'm I'm just offering to be the um, if if you need a sender that is the voice of the project, that shields any of you, um, I can send the email. But Adam is welcome to send it. I mean, we will have other communications as well, uh, blog and and social media stuff. Um, and I'm the one who watches the responses on those things anyway. So. And Neil typed in the chat that there's no way to really lessen the hate mail. And we are aware of that, but trying not to have it targeted at someone who's just doing their job. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll I'll give him Sean's Sean uh, Sean's name if because you're right. You uh, I remember. Oh my goodness! I've got the person before you. Um, he was, he managed to take right. a lot of, yeah, he managed to take a lot of uh, the heat off of our team when 
when things happened. So uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll let Adam know that that's an option. Okay. Um, all righty. Do we have anything else on this topic? We have no ongoing discussion. Oops. Technically, um, number 125 issue, um, the board activity, clarity and governance. I have opened a pull request. I actually opened two because I'm used to Garrett and I had troubles on my end. Um, but I did put a link to where it is written. Everyone so far who has looked at it has given positive feedback. Um, so I think we're good to go with that pull request and we can close out issue number 125. Um, issue number 118 was decision needed for open CPE initiative on list.centos.org. Fabian has been hard at work on that and I believe that can be closed as well as we are now running on the new lists. Um, so those are two good things. Um, from our random issues, I picked out number 80, sent to us stream nine in WSL. Let me bring that up so I can read more of it. Pat, and then Josh. Uh, I was uh, gonna provide a brief summary for the recording because I opened that ticket. Uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux is a great place for people to play with and try out distributions. So it would be nice to have some presence there. But as I understand it, there are licensing documentation -y, eula verbage things josh that's right still no movement on the red hat side um okay. we did get images into azure though congrats to everybody who did the work there thank you um but wsl2 is separate so. josh can you just add that to the yeah i can do that thank you all right, and then I picked out number 113 and 114 because the while they are separate issues, they kind of both go together. Um, 114 is create a new CentOS legacy mirror in Norway, and 113 is a CentOS Stream 9 mirror request. I believe the holdup that was causing issues originally was the um, had submitted for CentOS.no name, domain name. Um, Sean, I I think these are assigned to you, Davida. So well, I vaguely remember, I think the context there was that we were waiting to hear back from legal, I believe, if there were trademark concerns, because both if there were trademark concerns or if there were concerns that this would cause confusion, because it obviously has the name of the project in it. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, I'm sorry, I jumped the here if Troy wants to. Okay, Troy then, Sean. Mine's just real quick. So, yeah, I, is this a sponsored by us thing? Because um, I, I I do find it confusing that it says Santos. But I know. Um, so anyway, I just want to say yes, I find it confusing. And I will. Neil's typed in the comment, it's not from us. Um, Sean, go ahead. The, the the last thing I remember hearing from legal, um, and it's always a lengthy process in those conversations, is um, basically, is it something that the board wants to allow? Um, and then they would figure out the right terms under which it could be allowed if it's something the board wants. I think that's an open question at this point, given the conversations about confusion. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, I'm I'm not comfortable with with the CentOS without some other piece being the primary domain. I'm just not comfortable with that. If it was CentOS dot whatever their domain name is dot you know, that would be fine. Or if it was whoever they are, dash CentOS dot domain name, that would be fine. 
but just CentOS, I think, um, says we own whatever that is, and that we promote whatever that is, and we shouldn't we shouldn't allow a top level domain name of CentOS to be done by anybody unless we are doing it. I mean, that's just my opinion for anything that's that uses that name. Davida? So I, I generally agree on this. One thing to consider is this person or entity, I don't know if this is a person or a company or something, um, they did register the domain. And if you open it now, it, it points to a page that says, this is not an official Santos page, but coming soon. And then it has links to the, the thing they set up. Um, so I think if we take uh, if we take the stance that this is a cause for confusion and it shouldn't be a thing, then we probably need to have the conversation of do we need to like try to get the, the control of the domain or not, um, which can be torn in various ways. So there's something else to consider as part of this. Okay, so it sounds like we are in agreement that if they want to do centos-mirror dot whatever their domain name, we would be okay with that. Um, the issue is the control of the centos dot no name, um, which kind of goes back to the problem we had of getting centos dot im. Um, is that something? we want to update the ticket with is that the issue is, and we would still, I think, need labels input on this, but yeah, I know you own that now, but we had to get it. Um, so maybe we get legal's help in drafting up. We are okay with you doing a mirror provided these conditions are met, but the issue is a copyright issue with CentOS.no. Davide? Uh, it might be worthwhile, given that we're already talking to legal, asking for help drafting a, an actual trademark policy, because like this is this is a one-off, but it might not be a one-off in the future. And like it both helps if it happens in the future, it also I think helps make it like a bit less personal. That like it's not like we have a beef with this entity. It's, that in general, we believe that CentOS dot country code or like top level domains that are CentOS should be affiliated with the project. Um, so, yeah. oh, Dill sure mentions that there exists. are trademark policies. So yeah, we could we could also leverage that. Leverage on, that too. I'm sorry, I, I said I'm pretty sure that already exists in the FAQ from when Red Hat brought CentOS over. The it talks about names and using the name in. Yeah, we've had issues with the trademark policy. Um, Neil has suggested looking at Fedora's, and maybe that's a good idea um, because people do come with us and say we'd like to use CentOS. And the way we have interpreted the policy is as long as you're not abusing this and you're following these guidelines, we're okay. But at the same time, it's not very specific as to what conditions are okay. Um, so that is where some clarification from legal would be. Uh, Mike typed in Fedora is a good baseline, but I think we need some slightly different rules, which is probably true. Um, and then Neil covered it with, and to, not to mention the FAQ is gone. Okay, good to know. Um, I do think it is somewhere on the website. Maybe not what Johnny is referring to, but there is a legal page on the website. And that, at least as far as I know, is the one that's not really clear. Um, because we also, that I, an issue that I didn't pick up was again, somebody wanted to use the logo somewhere, um, which is where we always get into the trademark issue. Carlos? Carlos? I think that was just a notification that he joined, not a raised no, hand. No, it was a raised hand. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to raise the hand. I actually switched from my computer to my phone, that's all I did. Okay. All right. No problem. This is why we're kind of reinforcing it so that people can get a chance to speak. 
because we get dinged and hands go up. Davida? Uh, so I just pulled down centers.org slash legal slash trademarks. We actually have a section that says uh, examples of unacceptable uses of the centers mark is use of the marks as part of a domain name or subdomain, except as may be permitted by applicable law. Um, which okay, so I don't know what that actually that. means in practice, but we, we do have something, so we may want to ask for clarification. And yes, that is the URL that John just put in chat. Okay, so I think we're in agreement on the response that they are okay to do it in with some other domain name, um, but not using the centos.no, which seems to void. Um, copyright laws, but we should probably also get that type of response through legal just to make sure we are good to go. Sean, is that something you can take? Yes. Did we put enough notes in for you? Hang on, because I was on the other tab. All right, um, let me add some notes here real quick. Do you want to go with your, does anyone else have anything else on this while I type? Okay, Sean, um, why don't you go ahead and do your update and then we can peek at my typing and see if we need to edit it at all. Um, just quick things on events. I, um, I wasn't here last month because I was, I think on the airplane going to scale or something. So scale went really well. Um, um, I think, uh, the general attendance is, is trending upwards. Um, so scale's doing, I think, well as an event and the booth goes well and we have good conversations. So uh, we did this CentOS classroom thing where we did kind of an intro of the project and then we did a packaging workshop that Carl delivered. Um, <clears throat> had really, it had good turnout um, and people were really engaged, really interested in the packaging workshop. Um, there were, I think, a lot of places where we can streamline it if we want to deliver this kind of thing at another event. Um, it was our first time, and we kind of finished our slides, Carl and I, like, in the speaker ready room the hour before. So um, definitely has room to streamline, but it, it went well, I think. Um, that's it about scale. Um, Red Hat Summit's coming up, so anybody who's attending, um, come to Community Day on Monday for some sent to us talks in Community Central um, on the Expo floor hall. I don't have much else to say about that except it's happening. Um, oh, and in Community Central, there's a mini theater, and I think Davida and Neil and some other people are going to talk in there. So, um, uh, so that's it. Events-wise, oh, uh, actually, I'll I'll say also events. Uh, Flock is uh, happening, and there is a CentOS and Friends track, and the CFP is open. So um submit stuff or tell people you're working with that are doing interesting things to submit stuff um i don't know about the room block pat i uh i haven't booked my room yet so um uh, i'm not sure i'll check on that um i'll check on that and, and ping you guys on chat um that's it did i hear a hand go up sound i don't see a hand up johnny yeah, I, I just wanted to bring up one option for those trademark guys is they could donate that machine to CentOS.org and we would stand up mirror.centos.org on that machine. It would have that domain name. They would lose control of it. They'd have to give us admin control of the machine. We have a donor program, but they would give us control. We would maintain the mirror, but it would still be physically on their network they still would have access to it if they were concerned about fast speed, always up to date CentOS packages that would exist for them. And it would have CentOS.org as the name, right? Mirror.CentOS.org. Um, they would be able to use that. And, and if it had dual IP addresses, they'd be able to access one of the, the cards and everything else quickly. It just wouldn't be their domain name. That, I just wanted to bring that up as an option. Johnny, can you read what I just typed in the agenda? Or I can read it to you if you don't have it up. Is 
So I just typed, um, they can donate the machine and give us control and we would admin it, but still be in their network, which would allow them to maintain what they have. I still don't know if they would have to give us ownership of that domain name as well. Um, let me add that. Well, it, we, we would probably have to have ownership of that name if they wanted to use that name and, and do a forward to mirror.centos.org. Right. But, but, but the point is they could have physical access of the machine and they could get to it from that name. Um, and it would be fast for them. It would be computer network wise. It would be identical to them having it, except they wouldn't be able to administer it or, or access the machine. Okay. And I have added that they would need to turn over the domain name to us. So that's actually a really good option that we didn't know about. And we've done that for other big companies in the past. We've, okay. we've, we've stood up mirrors for them and maintained it for them on, on their hardware good as time. part of our donation program. Okay, excellent. And I have put those notes in here there. Um, one thing I do want to add to Sean's report is this week is Texas Linux Fest. CentOS and Fedora will be there in conjunction. Um, going back to the room box, Pat, I had asked them about that um, last week for you, and hopefully we will get that up and running. Um, one thing I do want to check as we're talking about Flock. Um, so the round one selections start on April 22nd, which is in two weeks. Um, and then second selection is on April 29th, and then final selections on May 13th. Um, so I'm assuming if you do want to talk to talk at Flock, you should get your talks in as soon as possible. It's not really clear there when the CFP is closing. They may allow more um, talks to get in after round one and round two, the way I'm reading this. But I want to suggest that if people want to talk at Flock, they should get them in sooner versus later. You should get them in sooner. Uh, there, there may be an extension, but if if there is, we will begin evaluations and acceptances uh, on the normal timeline. And you know, so things that get submitted later maybe are are vying for um, a, a smaller set of slots, I guess. All right, so that is the end of our agenda. Oh no, I have one other item. Um, and it kind of goes back to meetings. Do we want to have our meeting during Red Hat Summit, the next meeting, or do we want to bump it? Think on that. Sean, go ahead and go in the meantime while people are thinking. I uh, I, I hadn't even considered that. I Thank you. Um, no, I was I actually just had one more thing on my thing, which is whether to uh, discuss um, changes in the uh, EOL notices that we have on the website. I think I've, I think I've posted the screenshot actually in CentOS promo and not on the board channel. So um, I had done some changes to make the notice, I think, more prominent and include dates on it, um, as was discussed in the previous board meeting. Um, but uh, I'm not sure. I guess I could just put those and YOLO it and see how people react. Um, do you want to share your screen real quick and show people what you did? I can try. Actually, um, and in regards to changing the tabs, I think we need to get with Alon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things, there's, there's a limit to what I can easily do without uh, getting the theme. Uh, to have changes. All right, Bex. Um, I would like to see it first, and I am not a subscriber to the promo mailing list. So if you could provide some form of a pointer before you YOLO it, that would be awesome. Um, the other is you may want to ask Michelle for her opinion as a marketer. Yes, um, sure. 
for those of you keeping score, the word marketing was stripped from my title as of April the 1st. So marketers can now all breathe easily and feel safe and secure that I will no longer sell their reputation. Sean, were you able to share that real quick um, on, in the meeting? I'm trying to find the screenshot uh, that I have. Oh, I guess I could just download the screenshot from. I, just like Neil, am for the first time today using a newly provisioned machine. Uh, and I cannot, uh, off the top of my, I, Jekyll is not running for me right at this moment, and I'm going to have to figure out how to get it running, which is always an experience. Um, all right. So all I have is the screenshot to work with, but I can post that into the board channel and we can, I guess, maybe take it async. Um, or I could find my tab, which I'm not going to find it there. Uh, I don't know if it's right. All right, hang on. I'm looking for the tab to possibly be able to share it. Yes, I do have this many tabs open. Element, where are you? 404. Can someone find their element or matrix real quick and share it to the group? I have it. Um, now I have to close this with a board one and then attach. Oh, you found it? I found. I've lost my element. I have a screenshot to the board list. Okay. Of using a different notice type from the theme that's red and adding dates and adding a header and an icon that i think makes it pop more um it is still below that first fold um, because um theme changes would be required to make it above it but that same kind of notice could be used on the would would be the notice on the download page and the centos linux page uh, both of which have the notice well above the fold it's just the index page that has that big kind of blob up there that I, I can't get into without the, the theme. It. Okay, hang on. Yes, it really took me that long to find it. Uh, I just have to find the link. There it is. Oh. Let me see. Oh. Thank you, someone got to it faster. All right, so yes, it is still below the fold. Um, Neil, I know you had mentioned that you, ha you had never seen it before because it was before the below the fold. Um, and as Sean just mentioned, we can't really change that easily. Um, but how do people feel about the red, the addition of the dates? And Bex, we can still take it to Michelle. Um, Troy, and then Bex. Um, not only do I give it a thumbs up, but I like that saying end of builds for CentOS Stream 8. I had never heard that, and I think that is very accurate because the code, as far as I know, will continue to go there. But um, anyway, I just wanted to say I like the phrase end of builds. Okay, Bex and Josh. Um, I, I would love to hear Elaine's comments on this to see if uh, they have a better UI UX commentary, or I can try and scrounge up the UI person at uh, Red Hat who may be willing to volunteer some commentary. I just, in my first read of this, the thing that I consider to be the most important, which is understanding the dates, is the only non bolded text present. And so, like, my eye like skips that entire sequence of text. And I kind of start to dismiss the box again. That may just be me, but that was my initial reaction to it. Yeah, no, Bex, I was actually going to say the same thing. Like the bold should be flipped around <laughs> in the box <laughs> itself. It, uh, and then, that, yes, to confirm. Is that bold what, because it's bold or is it bold because it's a link? Probably the latter. Um, the latter. But that doesn't mean we can't make like the font bigger 
or it bold or something like that around the actual EOL dates. And then Troy, yes to your question, the code will still land in the CentOS stream repositories, but there are no builds. And importantly, there are no repos or composes. Okay, so it seems like people are, are in favor of the wording, the color change, because people didn't see the yellow, but that we feel that, and Sean, you can play with it, whether we can bold up the dates and bring more attention to that. And then still having marketing take a look at this as well. And Alon is working on a new theme. Um, and he's been playing recently with um, translations for it. So it'll be a translatable website. Okay, so it sounds like we have the action item of trying to play a little bit That's with the good. bolding to bring more attention to the dates. Um, Bex, do you want to take the lead on having Rel Marketing look at this, or do you want Sean to? Uh, Sean, you have direct contact with Michelle, so I'll let you drive because you have the screenshots. Should you need my assistance, I'm happy to do that. And okay. if you need me to see if I can find someone to assist with a UI, UXC kind of opinion, I have a couple of colleagues and friends I can ask. But you actually have access to somebody too through yeah, your sure. your amazing department over there, Sean. So this is true. I could run it by Thomas. Okay, do we have anything else we want to bring up? We have seven minutes left. All right, then I'm going to say this meeting is closed. I think it, it ran very smoothly um, with the hand raising. Very happy with that. Um, oh, we didn't decide about next month. Almost closed the meeting. Uh, what is the thoughts? I can run back and forth to the hotel. Davida, Sean, you're both going to be there. I don't know if anyone else is going to be there. Jeffro's going to be there as well. It will be on a Wednesday at what time does the meeting happen? It happens at four o'clock. So they're four o'clock for me right now. So it'll be two o'clock mountain time on Wednesday. I'm looking at the actual floor expo floor schedule. Um I mean, the expo floor is open the whole time, but it's a it's a non-critical time. It's not in the middle of um, like the boost crawl or something crazy. So I can I can get to my room if we're holding it. Okay, and we can also take this offline. I just wanted to bring it up and bring it to everyone's yeah. attention. All right, let's discuss this offline. Um, we don't have to make a decision right now, and. I will give everyone else five minutes back to their day. Thanks all. Hi, everyone. Take care.